Hey there, there. You're watching the Aussie BIM Guru. Today I've got a video that covers a topic I've had requested many times in Dynamo for Revit, and that is how to create floor openings around intersecting elements automatically. It's a really common challenge for engineers that are working with plant areas where you've got lots of vertical penetrations. Now I've shown in another video how you can manage horizontal penetrations through walls. This workflow is a little bit different, um, actually a little bit more straightforward probably. Um, but I'm going to show you some tricks and, and tips of how you can actually do things like grouping elements by how close they are to each other. Because you obviously don't want to generate openings around elements right next to each other. Anyway, I'll talk about that a bit more in the demonstration. Um, but in this case, I'll be using Revit 2020 um, and Dynamo 2.3. And you'll also need a couple of custom packages to follow along. In this case, I'll be using one node from my custom package, Crumple. And I'll be using one node from the Spring Nodes package as well to generate floor openings. Anyway, let's get started. Okay, um, so let's get started. So in this model, I've just set up a bit of a testing or demonstration set. And I've got some round ducts, some rectangular ducts, um, essentially just to put a variety of shapes into my floor that I want to generate openings for. As well as this, um, I've also got uh, a various variety of um, different sizes and configurations. So the goal is that the script is first going to have to sort these together by how close they are to each other, because often you'll put um, like letterbox openings for multiple sets of pipes, or maybe you'll conjoin, say, four sets of ducts. You wouldn't usually run a tiny strip of concrete between them, um, because usually you can't feasibly either fit that, or tolerance might be a problem, or you may also just have the challenge that you can't run reinforcement bars through that, that sliver of concrete. So often we usually instead block out an entire opening for these ducts. Um, sometimes we pull them apart in order to allow reinforcement through the, to, between, to run between them um, in case uh, it actually is needed, for example here. Um, but in this case the script works under the assumption that all of the elements have been placed at least in a logical manner from a coordination perspective. So let's get started. Um, so I'm going to begin in Dynamo and I'm just going to collect uh, two things. So I'm going to get a select model elements node. And I'm going to get a select model elements node. And the element is going to be the floor. So I'm just going to rename this to floor. And the elements are going to be um, the opening generating elements. I'll just call this um, elements for openings. And we're going to make these uh, inputs as well because we may go to Dynamo Player at the end. I'm just going to select all the elements for now so I can test them all. And I'm also going to select just the floor. So let's begin with these. Um, now we're going to begin uh, just by looking at our element generating elements, uh, at our opening generating elements, by getting their solids. So I'm going to use the element.solids node. Um, this makes sure that if there's any lines in these elements, they won't be included. And now we can see that we've got solid geometry for all those elements. I'm also going to do a solid union, um, just in case you ever run this script across something that generates more than one solid. Uh, I think I need to use a solid by union. And this will take each list of solids and combine them together into a single solid. In this case, they're all the same solids. It's one solid per element, but it's not necessarily always the case, especially when you may have a duct fitting, for example, with some detail on it. Um, so now we should be dealing with just uh, one solid per element. Um, now, the first thing I need to do in this case is find out where the element's located at its center point. So in this case, I'm going to get the solid centroid, which is going to be the absolute center of that element. And I'm going to want to assess these all on one common plane. So a really easy way to put elements onto one common plane is by deconstructing their centroid. So in this case, I'm going to use the dot X and the dot Y function in a code block. And I'm just going to construct a variable in this case, PT or point is what I'm using that to represent. And from this, I'm just going to construct a point by coordinates. And I'm just going to use the uh, point by coordinates by the X, Y. So in this case, I'm only re reconstructing it from two, ver two values. And in this case, this will just pull anything that isn't the same height or the same shapes centroid to a common plane. So we're essentially ignoring, um, in this case, the Z value of the centroid. So now we can see they're all just sitting on the same common plane. From these, we can now generate circles. And we're going to use these in order to group the elements together. So I'm going to co collect the center points. And for the radius, I'm just going to put in a number input. And I'm going to call this uh, proximity to group. So if they're within a certain distance of each other, um, this is how they're going to know because their circles are going to hit each other. So I'm going to make that an input as well. 
And with these circles, I'm going to have to do a few things. First of all, I'm going to turn them into a solid. So I'm going to extrude them as a solid just by distance. And I'm only going to extrude them by the default, which is one. So they're very thin little solids at the moment. I'm just going to turn off some previews as I go. And I'm also going to solid by union to put these all together. Now it's going to union everything, even if it's not touching. So it's not quite what I want. I've just got one solid now. So what I'm going to do with this is I'm going to intersect it with the XY plane. So I'm going to run a intersect between this and the XY plane. And the reason I'm going to do this is because what I'll get out of this is surfaces, but those surfaces represent the joined circles. And I can use these in order to go back and check which group of elements each element actually belongs to. Then we can use this to create a combined opening for each set of elements. It's a really handy little trick, this one, to group elements by proximity. Um, we're also gonna go, we're gonna do geometry does intersect. And I'm gonna be checking every element by level two here. So in this case, I'm gonna be checking it against every surface. And I'm gonna go back in this case and obtain that center point. I'm gonna be checking every center point. So I'm gonna be working at level one and I'm gonna do it for every single element. So I'm gonna apply longest lacing. And what I should get is basically an intersections list for each of those points. And logically they can only hit one of those points. So in this case, now I can just check the index of true. So I'm gonna say index of, and in the list um, at level two, because I wanna work across each list, I'm gonna say, where is the first index of true? And in this case, I should now be able to sort these based on these keys to know which particular patch these belong to. So in this case, now I can group by key and I can use these numerical values as keys. I can go back and take my original uh, solid that these elements contained. And now these are all gonna be broken down by which subset they belong to. So now we can isolate these and look at them um, just as, as they are. So I'm just gonna go and turn off a couple of previews. I'm gonna turn off my intersect. And I'm also just gonna turn off my point by coordinates. And now we're just dealing with these um, clusters of elements instead. Very useful. So now that we can proceed with this, the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna join these by union because I'm just gonna assess these as sets of elements. And I wanna know in this case, um, if we combine them all, uh, you know, what, what sort of um, outline are we gonna get as a bounding box for each of them? So I'm gonna turn that off and now we should have 11 solids and I'm gonna get their bounding boxes. So I'm gonna use the geometry bounding box in this case, and I should get 11 bounding boxes. Now I can't actually see the bounding boxes yet, but the only reason I'm getting this is to get the max point and the minimum point. Um, so we're gonna get the maximum point of the bounding box, which is the top rightmost point. And we're gonna get the minimum point as well. So somewhere in here, there should be a min point, which is the bottom left. So we're gonna push the bottom left point away from the elements and also the opposite for the right to reconstruct a new uh, bounding box around them. And we're gonna use this to intersect with the floors geometry. The reason we might wanna push this away is often around elements with an opening, we apply a certain degree of tolerance because we don't usually wanna leave no room for error or no room for the concrete person to just miss a bit of tolerance in there. Um, Cause they can come and pack it in with fire seal after anyway. So in this case, um, I'm just gonna hide solid by union and we've got our min point and our max point, but we're gonna translate these um, away from the center using a number. So this will be in this case, our tolerance. Let's just say we're dealing with a tolerance of maybe 50 for now in all directions. So I'm gonna construct um, some vectors to push these points by. I'm gonna do a vector by coordinates. And in this case, the first point, I'm pushing in the X and the Y direction by 50. I'm pushing it away in both directions. The other one, I'm gonna push in the opposite direction. So in this case, I'm gonna do a formula. I'm just gonna say V times negative one and X, Y, and V is going to be that, that original tolerance. I could say T actually for tolerance, that's probably a bit clearer. And now I'm gonna move my minimum point and my maximum point by these vectors in this case. So I'm just gonna do translate by direction. So to my maximum point, I'm gonna move it by this vector and to my minimum point, uh, I'm gonna move it by the other vector. I'm gonna turn off these points now that I've got the new ones that are applied with the tolerance. And I'm just gonna create a cuboid by corners. 
So I have to just find cuboid by corners. And we now have the low point or the minimum point, and we now have the high point or the maximum point. We can see now that we've reconstructed these elements um, into something with some applied tolerance, which is great. And from here, we're gonna go and intersect these with our original floor. So I'm gonna intersect. And I'm gonna apply the intersects from this geometry back to my floor. So I may actually have to go and just get my floors geometry first. So in this case, uh, I'm gonna take my floor and again, I'm gonna get the floors solids. So I, just in case the floor has more than one piece, um, which it probably feasibly can't. Um, and I'm also just gonna solid by union just to future proof um, the script. So by union, now we should have just one combined solid for that floor. And I'm gonna get the bounding box again of this particular floor. And I'm just gonna get the plane of the bounding boxes uh, maximum point because I wanna get the top of the floor and intersect the top of the floor. And the easiest way to do that is definitely to get the bounding box, the maximum point, uh, maximum point. And now I'm just gonna create a plane by origin normal. So in this case, the origin will be the maximum point, so the top of the floor, and the normal will just be pointing up. So now we've created the plane at the top of the floor, running across the floor. Um, obviously, this may not work if you have things like an edited profile applied to the floor, but then again, floor openings are gonna be quite difficult for you in that case anyway. Um, so this is a, assuming your floor is flat. Um, and then I'm just gonna intersect this plane with the other. And now we should get a list of surfaces. So if I just hide my cuboid, that's essentially the element that we're dealing with for the intersection. So from this, I'm gonna go and get the perimeter curves of that particular floor, of that particular intersection, I should say. Now in this case, it looks like it's interesting. One of our sets of elements looks like it hasn't quite generated what we would have expected. We can see there that we actually are gonna end up with two openings here because the duct is just far enough apart that it doesn't actually uh, meet the, the collected radius. So you may sometimes need to use a slightly larger radius potentially, maybe 350, 100. There we go. So at that point you can see now that's picking up the joining of the elements. Um, so do keep in mind the largest possible elements that you're trying to group together before you run the script as well. Um, so now we can see that's conjoined those two elements there. We're now going to just flatten the subcurve, the sublists, because at the moment you'll find the sublists are too deep. So at the moment I'm going to flatten everything at level two. And in this case, we should now have sublists of each of the curves around each of those elements. Now I'm going to also build the option for someone to build a circle around these instead. So to do this, I'm going to do a start point of each of the curves. And then around these start points, I'm gonna generate a circle by best fit through points. So in this case, it's gonna generate essentially um, a circle that has to fit all those points. So now we've got the circular representation of that bounded element um, with the applied tolerance. So now I can just turn off these nodes. And we're gonna essentially be picking one or the other. So I'm gonna use a custom node from my package, uh, Crumple, uh, called if then else which is a little bit like the if node, but it just sends through an entire list or another entire list. So in this case, I'm gonna say that if it's true, so I'm gonna make a Boolean and I'm gonna call this uh, square. So is it a square opening? And if it's true, then I'm gonna send through my square openings. Otherwise I'm gonna send through my circles. And if I just turn off this preview and also this preview and also this surface, I can see that when I toggle this, it's either circular or square. So I've got the ability to control that now. And the final thing we need to do is use a node from the springs package. In this case, we're gonna use the floor opening by curves. And I'm gonna switch over to manual mode now. And my host is gonna be my original floor all the way back here. My curves, which I've got in the form of sublists now, which means they'll generate openings each, um, will just be fed in here. And when I run this, we should see that openings should be generated. So I run, and there you go. You can see now we have one opening for each set of elements. So a nice little powerful workflow. Um, whilst we're still in Dynamo, we do have the ability to change things, which will redefine the opening. So 
I can see I can do circular openings, which doesn't always make a lot of sense. It makes more sense for singular singular openings. Um, and as well as this, I can also go and change the tolerance. Let's say I want zero tolerance. Well, in this case, I can see that I can reduce that tolerance around particular elements as well. Um, you may need to potentially revisit some of the algorithms for how it deals with circle, circles because the bounding box for circles obviously is a little bit different when you deal with applied tolerance. Um, but in this case, I'm just going to leave it as is, but you may potentially have to look at the algorithm a little bit deeper to make sure that circular tolerance is applied equally to single circular elements. What I might do now is just make sure that my inputs are all specified and I'm just going to go into Dynamo Player. And with this, I can now run the script as a little toolkit. So I'm just going to go back before I made openings. Open Dynamo Player. And off we'll go. So I'm going to navigate to <clears throat> where I've saved the script, which is just on my desktop. I'm going to edit the inputs and I should now be able to see all the inputs that I specified as input in the script. There we go. So we've got the elements for the openings. Let's just do these ones. I've got my floor. In this case, my proximity I'll say is 400. Um, and I'll say that my tolerance in this case is uh, maybe 25. I'm going to do square and I'll run. And there we go. You can see you've just done an opening around these elements. Um, let's use uh, one for these ones. Let's say my tolerance is 50. And there you go. So you can do multiple sets of elements at the same time based on predefined rules. And maybe finally for these ones, <clears throat> we'll do a circular opening with 25 mil tolerance. Again, remember that the tolerance isn't quite right for individual circular openings uh, because of the way a bounding box works. Um, but in this case, I might need to just, uh, okay, I've made a second opening there, my bad. So I actually still had the original one selected. Let's pick these ones. There we go. And there we go. So it's not quite right in this case, uh, mainly just because of how the bounding box is interpreted. So I believe in this case, the bounding box, because it goes outwards as such, I believe that it's going to be based on, it's going to be based on the most extreme point. I'm just trying to figure out exactly how this relationship works, but I know that the bounding box is a little bit different for how you deal with it for these sorts of elements. Um, I'll try to deconstruct it in Dynamo, um, but I just don't want to take too long because I know we sort of solved the problem. Um, but in this case, I'll just try to deconstruct what's happening. So if we go back a few steps and we go to our non-reconstructed bounding box. In this case, I believe it's because when we create a bounding box and we move the point this way, we're not necessarily moving it um, to uh, radial offset necessarily. So we, we probably need to look instead at maybe moving in a certain degree instead, because that bounding box probably doesn't quite represent what we need. So in this case, maybe there's a way where instead you can just do the bounding box as it is um, and find the center point of those edges instead of the corners. And then they, those center points can be used to bound a new circle instead. And that will then apply a tolerance. So you might need another if then else gateway to process some of those logic gates, um, but that's one way you could solve that problem. Um, otherwise, it's a fairly robust script and um, it's quite a, quite a handy thing for engineers that are having to do a lot of openings in a floor at once, which I know is quite common. You could also use the same intersecting lines to generate hobs as walls around those curves as well, if you do need to put buns around those openings, which is quite common as well. So there we go. Um, I hope you found that tutorial useful. I know a lot of people have requested it a lot of times, um, so I hope that you found this useful. I know some of you requested it quite a while ago. Um, it's been on my list for at least a few months. Um, anyway, if you're not already following and subscribing, uh, feel free to do so. And I look forward to seeing you in future similar videos. Thanks. Take care. Bye.